Hi guys, Sandy from The Paddle School. In this video today, we're gonna to talk about how you can beat tennis players on the paddle court. Now, we did a survey on the channel and we found out that this is the opponent base that is the most difficult for you to play against. So in this video, we're gonna talk about things that tennis players like doing, things they don't like doing, and how you can beat them if you're playing against them in a match. So this will be useful for those players that are always playing against tennis players, but this will also be useful if you have come from tennis to see the areas of the game that you should be focusing on. It was about nine years ago when I made the move from tennis to paddle. And really the only way that I learned was by going to Spain and working with some of the best coaches to try and understand how to play the game myself, but also how to coach the game. Now we set up this channel with the view to sharing that information in English because it's not that easy to find. And it's basically to help you become a better player. So if you do want to improve your game, please click the subscribe button. It will help show me you're enjoying the content and also it will share this information with more players in English. So to begin with, let's talk about the area of the game that tennis players like. So the volley and the net position is probably the most comfortable for a tennis player because the technique is so similar to that of tennis. Also in paddle, it's quite easy to get to net and to stay at net. So you get to enjoy those volleys. Whereas in tennis, normally what happens, it can be quite difficult to get to net. And when you do get to net, it's only for one or two volleys maximum, and then the point is over. So a lot of tennis players enjoy being at the net and they usually have good fast volleys. They also like to hit their overheads aggressively. So any ball that goes up, they like to hit an attacking smash, partly for the satisfaction that it gives off the racket, but also it's what they're used to. The ball ends up going behind them and they're aggressive with that smash. Another area that tennis players enjoy is chipping and charging. So they're at the back of the court, they hit a ball down to the feet of the volleyers or at the volleyers, and then they like to come forward quickly trying to attack that ball. So these are the main three areas that they really enjoy. The volleys, the attacking overheads, and also chipping and charging up the court. So now looking at areas of the court that tennis players do not like, to begin with the glass. Now this is very foreign for tennis players and any ball that comes along this back, they move into this position and they're almost always using the wrong technique to begin with until they actually learn it. So the glass, both the single glass and the double glass is very difficult for tennis players. The other area that they struggle with is being patient in the points. They're always trying to rush and finish the point. And then the third area is showing restraint with their smashes. So this is basically basically when the lob goes up, them not being attacking on everything and choosing when to hit the right smash. That's another area that they don't like because there are so many different techniques for the smashes in paddle and you need to learn those before you can hit them effectively. And obviously a tennis player coming straight to the paddle court doesn't know them, so they're not very comfortable with that shot either. So now we've established what tennis players like and don't like, how are we gonna put that into the point? Well, to begin with, let's discuss when you're serving and you both come to the net position. From the net position, you've got to think of a few different things. Firstly, if you hit any volley short or halfway up the court, they're probably gonna try and chip and charge. That means they're gonna try and play fast to you and then run up the court. But the problem with them doing that is that they won't be in a good position. They'll end up in no man's land. And here, all you have to do is hit to the gaps. So that might mean playing a volley down the middle Middle so that they're out of position or round, the, round them in the angle and therefore again they're out of position yeah so just keep it simple if they do come up like that just volley back down the middle of the court and force them to then go chasing that or having a very difficult pickup volley the second thing is if you get a neutral ball try and use the glass whether it's the back glass or the side glass or even better double glass and you do that by hitting a little bit faster a bit deeper into the court and therefore they'll either have to have a really difficult half volley or they they'll have to use the glass, which is exactly what you want. And then the third thing is just be prepared for them to try and hit fast at you. In tennis, you get that net position or you hit past the volleyer by hitting a passing shot, which you have to hit quite hard. So a lot of tennis players do that here where they're trying to hit hard either at the body or past the opponent. And if you as a net player are ready for that and you're expecting that, you're gonna find it a lot easier. Okay, so when you're returning, there are a few things that you need to consider. First of all, normally the volleyer, they hit fast and flat. So that means it's a lot easier for you to play after the glass. If you're blocking this ball off a fast flat volley, it means that you're more than likely to make a mistake. So be prepared to allow that ball to come off the glass. And then from there, you just guide that ball back over the net. You don't need to try and beat them for speed. Yeah, so when that ball comes fast off that glass, be ready to come there, racket already prepared and softly guide 
slide that ball back. The other thing to think about is when you hit the lob, try hitting the really high lob because that's when you would normally have to have variety of smashes and it can be more difficult for them to hit an aggressive smash if the lob is higher. And then the third thing is when you do hit a lob, whether it's a high one or a normal lob, always be prepared to move forward up the court because if they're always going for those smashes, you know that it's gonna bounce off that back glass, you can come forward up the court and therefore be in an attacking position. If you hit that lob and you stay at the back here and watch and they end up smashing the ball fast, you don't have time to get forward. So really you prepare and start moving forward. As soon as they get their racket back, you want to really start moving up the court. So if you are a tennis player, firstly, sorry about giving away your paddle secrets, but also it shows that there's a few areas of the game you need to work on. You need to work on that being patient. You need to work on getting comfortable and confident around the glass. And then you also need to work on your overheads. Now, I've done a series of videos for exactly those last two topics, which is the glass, getting comfortable with the wall, how you should be turning and reacting with that ball that goes in towards the glass, as well as a whole course on the overheads, the different varieties of overhead, where and when you should be hitting them. And these will really help you understand those parts of the game and it will immediately improve your game if you're not doing them well at the moment. I'll put the links down in the description below and I'll also put them off to this side but if you haven't watched them already I would definitely recommend enrolling in that course.